For StarTelegram.com, I'm Fort Worth Star Telegram sports columnist Mac Engel. He is sports and TCU savant, Mr. Drew Davison. We are in the TCU football meeting room where TCU Director of Athletics Jeremiah Donati just met with the media to address the uh, resignation of football coach Gary Patterson. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about with this subject because we haven't seen anything like this around here in a long, long time, decades. While Texas, Texas Tech, and Texas A&M have run through coaches like Sox or other things, uh, TCU has been unbelievably uh, fortunate to have just one coach for as long as it did. But the Gary Patterson era is over, which leads everybody to discuss the next topic, which is who will replace an unreplaceable coach. Drew, we've seen a thousand names. There's nothing more exciting in college football than wondering <laughs> who's going to get hired. This is a really interesting offseason. Well, it's offseason already for a lot of programs. Right. USC doesn't have a head coach. Washington State doesn't have a head coach. Texas Tech doesn't have a head coach. Uh, LSU doesn't have a head coach. Who else am I missing? Georgia Tech? UConn. U yeah, UConn. <laughs> There's your winner. Um, a lot of names floating around there. Um, right. Obviously, with Matt Wells being fired at Texas Tech, it's going to change this a lot. Sonny Dykes is available at SMU. Well, he's not available, but he is. Uh, he has a lot of ties to Texas Tech. He has ties to TCU, who's an offensive assistant on Gary Patterson's staff in 2017. Who's yeah, going to be the next coach? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the betting favorite, I guess, or, or whatnot, is probably Sonny Dykes, right, from SMU. Uh, coached here, has a relationship with Jeremiah Donati. Uh, not that that's going to be the deciding factor, no, but, but obviously, helps. yeah, but obviously ha has had success over at SMU. Um, has worked the transfer portal well mm -hmm. and, and the NIL thing. It looks like he's on top of that. But with that being said, there's going to be a lot of interest in this job. Uh, and, and Jeremiah and Donnie said, you know, the Board of Trustees has two guys with deep football roots and LaDainian Tomlinson and Joe Briggs, who's a lawyer with the NFL Players Association. So I think, you know, there could be some NFL guys even emerging uh, from the group. But I do think – you know, TCU wants a sitting head coach at the college level who's had success. Um, now, whether that's a group of five guy like Sonny Dykes who, who kind of comes back to the power five level or, you know, I'm sure there's some power five coaches who are quietly expressing some interest no because doubt. TCU has shown they're willing to pay. I mean, Gary Patterson was a top ten paid coach in the country. So TCU definitely has resources. You look at the stadium, you look at the recruiting grounds right here in the Metroplex. Uh, you, you know, this is a very attractive job. Maybe not an LSU or USC uh, caliber right. or, or in terms of blue blood, but not far behind. No, and Jeremiah Donati said that when he was asked about where TCU sort of ranks in that sort of power listing of, of jobs that will be available. And I think he's right. I don't think it's too much to say that TCU will be just under a USC, which is obviously a blue blood, and LSU, which has won. Both programs have won national championships this century. Uh, when I looked at you know, one of the things that surprised me that Donati said today that I didn't expect when he was asked, would you look for a defensive sort of minded coach or an offensive minded coach? He didn't hesitate. He was thinking offensive minded coach, which that's a Sonny Dykes guy. Now, it's a type of coach. Now, the one thing about Sonny Dykes that you said I'll take a little bit of exception to is that Sonny Dykes was a Power Five coach before, but he was a Power right. Five coach at Berkeley, University of California, which, yeah, Cal Berkeley is a Power Five job. It's part of the Pac 12, but Anybody who's aware, and I know you know this too, Berkeley is not Stanford. It is not USC. It is not Boulder. Uh, actually, it's probably got more in line with Boulder <laughs> than, than I thought. But right. it's a that's a different Power Five job. It's so to Wake event, Forest of the ACC. Yeah, kind of. But <laughs> except, right. I mean, it is. It's. I'm not even sure it's Wake Forest. I mean, it's right. such a liberal place and winning in the traditional sense, the way college athletic functions in the Power Five structure is a lot different. So I always thought it was kind of unfair to evaluate what Sonny Dykes did at Berkeley because nobody wins there. Now, and he had some good co he had some terrific players there. He had uh, Jared Goff, who's a future first round NFL draft pick, uh, and he went to a Super Bowl and he had Davis Webb who started at Texas Tech before he had finished up his college career at Berkeley and had a nice run under Sonny. Um, there's other guys who are gonna be available. Uh, Jeremiah Donati said he wanted to have this done in about a month, right? right? Wants to have it done before signing date, December 15th-ish. Um, if you had to guess, I don't know why. In the last 48 hours, I've changed my mind. I'm like, they're going to go get Sonny. They're going to get Sonny. I think they're going to get Sonny. Uh, and it fits for all the reasons that you, we've talked about. Right. For some reason, I don't think they're going to go get Sonny. Obviously, UTSA's Jeff Trailer would be a major get, but he just signed a 10-year extension. 
It's right. not worth the paper it's printed on, but he signed it for a reason. I, I don't know, but I, I was really locked in on Sonny, and now I'm not so sure anymore. But do you have any really strong feelings about this one way or the other? Yeah, I mean, I still think Sonny Dykes is a strong candidate, but maybe not the strongest. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if some of these Power 5 coaches, you know, express interest and uh, really kind of add value, <clears throat> you know, I could see them making, you know, going after that more of a splashy, sexier type name, but... But I certainly think Sonny Dykes is on the short list. So it's a fascinating time here at TCU. Interesting time. Quite frankly, a sad time. Gary Patterson meant a whole lot to TCU and certainly into Fort Worth. And his contributions would be difficult to quantify. And whomever is asked to replace him should ask not to be him. For the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Drew Davison, I'm Mac Engel.